All right, guys. Everyone say hi to Melly. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, so find the dot product. Let's get the formula for that one first. Preston, what's the formula for the dot product? A1 times A2 plus B1 times A2. Okay, A1 times A2 plus B1 times B2. According to the two vectors we have down below, Lily, what is A1? Um, Negative two. A two. Nadia is what? Good. Plus Philip. B one is twelve. B two is Drew. Three. All right, guys. Do your basic math. Give me the magic answer. Remember, the dot product is not a vector, so that's why you're gonna see one number only. Thirty-two final. Someone confirm that for me. Perfect. Box it up. Then part two says, find the angle between your two vectors. Uh, go look back at your notes. Paige, can you please give me the angle formula between two vectors? So the magnitude of V times the magnitude of W, uh-huh, like that, okay. Would you guys agree that we need to find theta? So at some point, we do have to take cosine inverse. Is that okay? In the notes, I kind of gave you that as well, but that's okay, we'll start with this. Did we, Tommy, did we find the dot product already? Yes, yes which is what, bud? 32. Good, so now we're gonna write cosine of theta equals 32. I do want you guys to find the magnitude of V, so we'll do it down here. Do that for me right there. And then find the magnitude of W down there. All right, everyone go take a minute to do those. Annabelle, what's the formula for the magnitude? Great. All right, Kara, whenever you have the magnitude of V, you give it to me straight up. And then Luke, you are in charge of the magnitude of W. So just give me those inexact answers, okay? So we don't normally round to the very, very end. Um, I can't one forty-eight. Someone confirm that before I go further. Okay, good. Thank you. I got rad thirteen. Rad thirteen. Those are good too. Okay, so now we're gonna chuck in the bottom. So rad one hundred and forty-eight times rad thirteen. Obviously, we're trying to find for it. We're trying to look for theta, so what do we do to both sides? <coughs> Cosine inverse. Okay, this is where we can round if we were asked to round. So take your calculator, punch that in. I want to see, what do you guys want to do? Degrees or radians? Degrees, okay, so keep it in degrees. Let's uh, agree to round to two decimal places, okay? Just to keep it consistent because it didn't say in the instruction. Also, remember, the angle between two vectors is only limited between which and which. Theta is limited between where and where, y'all? Zero degrees all the way to? 180, exactly. 180, so be mindful of that restriction as well. Okay, punch it in. Once you have your answer in degrees in two decimal places, uh, Shannon, can you give it to me? One five. Someone confirm? Perfect. Box that up. That is the angle between vector V and W. Now, it said, the letter C said, tell us if the two vectors are parallel or orthogonal or neither. So, Lindsay, remind us what angle do we have to have for the vectors to be parallel? What angle do we need to have for it to be parallel? 
right? 0 pi or 0, 180 since I'm in degrees, that cool? Then, Angelina, what angle should we have if we want to be orthogonal? Um, what is it? 90, perfect. Kiera, is our angle 90 or 0 or 180? No. no. So students, the two vectors are what? <coughs> Neither. Let's we'll circle that one. Okay. So that's how we apply the dot product. Example dos. Okay. Jasmine, can you help us read example two instruction? Example two. Decompose vector units of two vectors of vector v1 and vector v2, where vector v is parallel to w and v is orthogonal. So v1 is parallel to w and v2 is perpendicular orthogonal to w, okay? All right, guys, let's start with the formula. Oh my, what is v1? Look back at your notes. Once you have V1, write the formula down for V2. So Beatrix, what did your note say for V1? Um, so it okay, that's okay. Take your time. Locate it. Ask the team. Teamwork, y'all. I'm going to give you a hint. There's a dot product involved. Okay. Perfect. Um, Angie, what is V2? What's the formula? Can you close your book for now, hon? Perfect. Awesome. Let's rock and roll. Okay, let's look at the two vectors on example two. Okay, Julio, are they the same as example one? <laughs> the two vectors for example two, are they the same as the two vectors of example one? Yes. So did we do the dot product already, Julio? Yes. <laughs> oh, oh yeah, you know, I am old. Okay. Dot product, V dot W, Julio, what was the answer? Uh, v dot w. 32. 32, beautiful. Julio, did we find the magnitude of W already? <laughs> Which was? Rod 13, we will square that, okay, because the formula said so. Then students, it says here, multiply to vector w, y'all, which is 2i plus 3j, okay. So in the bottom, rod 13 square, that's just going to be 13. Then now we have 32 over 13. We do need to distribute this out with the 2i plus 3j to get our final answer for vector v1. Okay, distribute that out like that. Okay, final answer. What should we box up, Iran? Leave it in exact form, okay, bud? 32 times 2 is what? Uh, 64. Good, over? 32. Perfect, in the I direction. And then 32 times 3 is? Uh, Perfect. Over? Yeah. Over? Uh, 13. 14. Yeah. Perfect. Good job. All right. Then let's do V2. V2, we will take V1. I'm sorry, not V1, but V, which is negative 2 in the I direction plus 12 in the j direction, subtract your newly ugly found v1, which is 64 over 13 in the i direction, plus 96 over 13 in the j direction. Guys, how, how do we do this now? Now it's just basic math. What should we try? Yeah, common denominator like terms. Would you guys agree? 
So I'm gonna put the like term together. It's gonna be negative two in the i direction minus 64 over 13 in the i direction plus 12j minus what? 96 over 13. True or false, by the way? Yeah. Is that okay to put the like term together before we find before we look for LCD? All right, now you look for the LCD. You combine those, and then you are gonna give me one final answer here for vector V2. So leave it in exact form, okay? What's the LCD? 13, okay, perfect. So Andrew Bui, give me the final vector for V2 once you're ready. Um, I got over 13 I. negative 90 over 13i plus 60 over 13j. 60 over 13j. Question mark, guys, are you okay? Yes, no, maybe? Okay, cool. Good job. Let's go down to the next question. Example three. Um, all right. Oh, can you guys change this right here, the grade of 20 degrees, not percentage? All right, Danielle, can you please help me read the first two lines there? Ooh, all right. Guys, I'm asking... What? In plain English, what am I asking? How much, what? Magnitude, how much force, right? I need to do what? To keep my kids safe. Plain and simple, okay? So, I have triplets. If you don't know me by now, they used to be little. So this is, they're no longer 30, 40 pounds each. They are now much heavier. Uh, they're 10 now. So back in the days, I used to walk around my neighborhood with a, pretend that this is a straight line because this is, with a triplet wagon. If you ever seen it, it's like crazy. And I put my kids in there and I walk around the neighborhood. I live on a hill slightly, not sure what the degree is, but I made up 20 degrees because it looks like a nice number. Okay. All right, so let's talk about this really quickly. My whole job back in the day, and still now, hopefully, is to keep them safe. So we're gonna use math to figure out how much force is needed to help them stay, not roll down the hill. So a couple of things is we're gonna use some variables, so let's define it here. First, we are going to use vector w. Okay, we're gonna use vector for everything, even though it's really nothing, okay? So vector W, we are going to make it parallel to the hill, okay? So I have the hill drawn here, guys. Then it's parallel, it's this. By the way, guys, parallel vectors, they just have to go the same way. Does that make sense so far? They don't have to have the same magnitude. Are we clear on that piece? Okay. Um, one go this way, one go this way, it's still parallel. Does that make sense? It's just a different direction, okay? So parallel means they have the same angle. So we'll call this W. Now, because it's parallel to the hill, the, we don't know the magnitude, okay? But we, we do know the angle. Does that make sense so far with that piece? What is the angle here for the hill, since it is parallel to the hill? Uh, what? 20. 
So vector W, it's parallel to the hill, so we are going to say it is cosine of 20 degrees in the I direction plus sine of 20 degrees in the J direction. Okay, we don't have the magnitude because we don't know. It's just a vector that's going to be parallel to the hill. Okay. We will give vector F as gravity. Okay, so let's do here. F over here is gravity. We'll spell that out for those of us. Okay, F is the force of gravity. And gravity goes always what? Down. So, now because my kids weigh how much in this made up question here? 120. And then it's downward. So what are we using, I or J? Only J. So negative 20 because it's downward for gravity. And we are going to go J. We are going to do the math way first, and then I'm going to do the physics way, and then you get to pick which one you want to use. Okay? It doesn't bother me. Then, next, we do want to have a variable. Let's use uh, V. V is the force causing the wagon to roll. V is the force causing wagon to roll. Okay, or make things roll down. So I'm going to go this way. And remember, vector can be drawn anywhere. So just... Then, guys, if V is the force that's causing it to roll, what's opposite of V then? Yeah, negative V, which is, in essence, is what? Yeah, friction, preventing it from rolling. Would you guys agree? Yes, no, maybe? Okay, in plain English. Some of you have in physics and you guys are more advanced, okay? Um, some of us are not, so I'm just gonna use like basic language. So negative V is what's keeping it from? It's keeping it from rolling, yep. Super basic term, keep from rolling. Okay, if you're in physics, you have more advanced than this. So again, I said, we're gonna do the math way first. Yesterday, we learned the projection of V onto W, right? That formula, which we call it V1. You guys agree with that? Okay. We are going to write the V1 formula down again, even though we just wrote it above. So, V1 formula. Parker, what is the V1 formula based on yesterday? Or based on just an example above. V times dot product of V. Over yep. the magnitude of W squared all times the of W. Perfect. And yesterday we said, okay, mm -hmm. this is the projection of V onto W. And we also went on and said V1 was parallel to what? To W. Okay, the reason I'm selling this out is so that we can go back at our picture because we have a slightly different variables here. So out of all of the variables we have drawn here, okay, we are going to substitute some things in because we have F now, we don't have V1 anymore, okay. So we're going to use the formula using the variable that we have used here in the picture. So the formula that we're going to use is V equals, we have F, so we're going to use F dot W all over the magnitude of W squared times W. And here's what we want to talk about. So based on our drawing okay we remember v onto w meaning that v1 is parallel to w so look at our drawing would you guys agree which one's parallel to which so yesterday we said v1 
it's parallel to W. Can you see that V is parallel to W in our drawing, just on the variables? Okay, so that's why we're just kind of using some new variables here. So that's why I want to make sure we understand from the old one. Well, we want to find V1, okay, because the question is that determine the vector projection F onto W. So if we want to find V here, what, how do we find the dot product of F and W? What's the formula? Yeah, okay. Oh, um, A1. A1. So what is A1 for F? Um, zero. zero times A2 for W, which is what? Zero. Um, Cosine of 20 degrees. Okay. Plus B1, which is what? Negative 120 times b2 sine of 20 and then i'm going to write the bottom flip all over square root w right remember the magnitude is a squared plus b squared well what is a squared for w what's a squared cosine square of 20 degrees what's b what's b for w Sine, so square it, so sine square of 20, and then I'm going to square it. Would you guys agree? Okay, square it. Then I'm going to multiply by the W vector, which is cosine of 20i plus sine of 20i. All right, I'm going to hold it right here before I go any further so you can copy. Now, this is why... After we do all the basic math, we discover math, and then we're like, oh, yeah, you know what? There's a quick way. And that's why physics stole it. What's zero times anything? Zero. zero. Well, look at the denominator. What do you see that's like magical? First, the radical and square, what happens? It cancels itself out. And you got cosine square of 20 degrees plus sine square of 20 degrees. Uh huh. <gasps> it's one. Whoa. All of that work comes out to be one. Okay, so students, right now, we currently have V equals just the top, right, guys? Negative 20 sine of 20 degrees times cosine of 20 degrees in the I direction plus sine of 20 degrees in the J direction. Okay, I'm going to hold it right there before I go further. Now, you take a calculator, and you punch it in for me, this piece right here, and give me in two decimal places, so keep it consistent with the one above. All right, Brandon, what is your two decimal place? Okay. Negative uh, 0 4, and then I'm going to copy this down. Perfect. Good job. All right, that's what we have. This vector is in polar form. Would you guys all agree with that statement? Okay, in polar form, where's the magnitude always? In the front. In magnitude, can it be negative? No. So it says here, find the magnitude, students. Guys, the magnitude is always the absolute value of that front number in polar form. So what is an absolute value of negative 41.04? It's 41. 0.04. Now we're looking for the force. So the force has, in this particular case, is going to be in pounds. Okay. So the force that's going to be needed to keep the kids from rolling down the hill is 41.04 pounds. Now let's go and see if my physics people can help us out with your physics way to see if we have a matching answer. Who want to volunteer? 
No? Did you take a quiz on this already? No. no? Are you still in it? No. Oh, okay. Oh, so it's like parallel. Huh? You're the what? I'm on projectile. Oh. <laughs> I don't know. Okay. All right, guys, here we go. Uh, okay, method number two. And you get to pick. I don't have a preference of which one you do because guess what? The answer is always the same. All right, here we go. We have the same picture except I'm going to draw it in this way. First, we have W is the vector that's parallel to the hill. V is the, yeah, okay. So I'm going to draw parallel to V, but going the other way. I want to keep my kids from rolling, so I'm going to go this way. This is negative V. True or false? True, okay. Then I'm going to draw something that's going to be perpendicular to that. So I'm going to make, let's call this F2, just because. All right. So far so good? We're just kind of adding some variables. Can you see the, uh, the gravity? It's always perpendicular to the ground? Right there? So let's do some, this is just pure basic trig. There isn't anything about this that's not basic. If this is 20 degrees, if the gravity is 90 degrees, what is this leftover angle? 70. I'm going to write it right there. So far so good? If that's 70, y'all, what is this? 20? Yes or no? Okay. And we are now using the orange triangle. Are you guys ready? Using basic trig only. I'm trying to look for the magnitude of V, the negative V in this case. Is that cool? So I'm, magnitude is simply the length. Don't think too much of it. I'm looking for the length of that negative V. What is the trick basic formula? Sine of what? 20 degrees equal to opposite, which is negative V. Well, I'm looking for the length, so that's why I'm using magnitude. Can you see where this is going? Over the hypotenuse of my orange triangle. What is the hypotenuse of my orange triangle? F in this case. True or false? Yeah. Well, I'm looking for the magnitude. I'm looking for the length. So what is the length of F? Negative 120. What's an absolute value of negative 120? 120. Remember, I'm still looking for V, right guys? But I do know the bottom. Yes or no? Oh, moving up. What do we do now to solve for the magnitude of V? Multiply both sides by? Yeah. So magnitude of V, or in this case negative V, but the magnitude of negative V is the same thing as magnitude of V, right guys? Well, can you take a calculator and punch on that? What is that? We did that already. Which is what? 41.04 pounds because it's the force. So now physics, if you didn't know why your teacher was telling you how to do it like that, that's why. Right? Because I'm pretty sure you just kind of did it. It's very simple. It's just basic trick. What if I... And, that the, and we use a cosine if we want to find perpendicular, right? Because in physics, you also find perpendicular. Am I correct? <laughs> All right, let's move on to just the back. Let's do work. Last page, guys, last page before Christmas. Okay, the work done by a constant force 
in moving an object from point A to point B is the formula as, here we go, work W is the magnitude of F times, there's no dot here, so times the distance, okay? So I'm going to fill it out here. Work equals magnitude of force times the distance. Well, distance is magnitude, right, guys? Okay. And this formula is used. Um, uh, so work is commonly measured in foot pounds. Okay, so. We're going to use foot pound in here. I know in, in, in physics, you guys don't use foot pound as much. What do you guys use in physics? Newton. Newton? Yep, totally. Uh, so this formula is assume that force is applied along the motion. Okay, so assume force, which is F. Is applied along the line of motion. But what do I mean by that? What's along the line of motion? What do we mean by that? That's parallel to? Yeah, so like, hey, look at this guy. He's trying to move his cabinet. I don't think that's how you should do it, but can you see that his arm is pushing upward, not parallel? Right? So that's, so if he is put parallel, then that would be along the line of, of motion. But he has an angle now, so that's why this bottom one is not, okay? So the bottom one is not along the line of motion, so we have a different formula. So the work when we have an angle is the dot product of the force to your distance AB. So this is when we have an angle, okay? All right, let's do one last example, and you guys are gonna... All right, Casey, can you please help me read this last, oh, this is an extra one for no reason. Um, last example here. Oh, so yeah, that's a degree. There's like an underlined degree there for some reason. Okay, so here we go. How much work is done? So, question number one Is this parallel, which is along the line of motion, or does it have an angle? An angle. So, which one do we use? First formula, or second formula? Second, so the dot product of work to AB. So let's find the force here. The force is making what degree? 32 the, the ground, okay? So we want to find the vector for the force. What's the magnitude? How heavy? 50 pounds. We're going to write it in polar form first. Cosine of? What angle? 30 to the I direction plus sine of 30. Okay, let's simplify this out. Uh, what is cosine of 30? Rad 3 over 2 in the I direction plus, rad plus 1 over 2. Distribute the 50 from you guys. So what is the final vector of force in the form of AI plus BJ? 25 rad 3 in the I direction plus 25 in the J direction. So that's your final in the form of BI plus, I'm sorry, AI plus BJ. Do we know, guys, vector AB? A is the distance, right? Are we going up? Are we throwing the ball upward? Are we going horizontally? Which way are we going? Horizontally. So which do we need, I or J? 
I. How much I? A hundred I. Oh man, that's a lot of glasses. All right. So a hundred I's is all we need for A to B. Can we do the dot product? Yes or no? Yes. A1 is what? 25 rad? Three times B, I mean A2? 100 plus B1 times B2? Zero. So final answer is in exact form is, what's 25 times 100? 2,500, rad, three. And then this is foot pounds, LBS. Oh, that's BLS, ooh, LBS. That's an egg roll, guys, last 